The field of 68 has been whittled to 66. Now four more teams look to etch their way onto the big bracket. A pair of 16s looking to advance and face Goliath. They will move on for the first time in program history. And a rematch of one year ago. Wide open, they got it to go! Four teams with the dream to follow in the footsteps of past first four pioneers. The moment they've been waiting for all year has arrived. The first four continues next on True TV. Two more teams set up for the first four for North Carolina Central. They come in looking to make some noise. It's Lavelle Poetry and Moten, not a nickname I gave him, one he had when he was the third all-time leading scorer at the school. Now he looks to take his own program deeper where UC Davis will meet them. Jim Bless has been there before, took Bradley to a Sweet 16 in 2006. Now he's hoping for one more sweet win to move on in the dance. We're dancing from Atlanta. The first four continues right now. We welcome you inside our home for the next few days. A lot of basketball, little sleep. It is the Infinity NCAA tip-off show. Welcome inside our studios. It is Casey Stern, Seth UC Davis. On the right, Brennan Haywood, and the well-dressed Long Islander down on the NMO Reserve. Hey, you guys all look fine yourselves, too. See, that is... Hey, Wally's killing it tonight. My stylist. The pocket My stylist square. nailed it. My wife picks out my clothes. Okay. Nailed it tonight. There you go. John Roth is going to be a little jealous that he didn't get to the pocket square. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I need a little help with the pocket square. The right, pocket square police is well, all around. We, we take a look and give you help on what's coming up tonight. We had two great games yesterday. We're hoping for more of the same. NC Central and UC Davis, pair of 16s, will kick us off from Dayton. And then it's the Friars of Providence and USC. They battled last year to a layup finish. What do we get this time around? Mentioned it before, for UC Davis, this may be new for them, but it's not new for their coach. Jim Les has been here before when he coached Bradley back in 2006. He made a run to the Sweet 16 as an underdog. He knows what it takes. Here, he takes some time with our own Rosgold Amude. Thanks, Casey. Coach, it's the first time the Aggies have ever been to the tournament. How do you make sure the moment doesn't get too big for the team? Well, we're just going to talk about the effort and energy plays without the ball. If you focus on those things, it's a funny how the ball finds a way of finding you, and then you can make plays. So effort and energy off the ball, and that usually leads to defense. Well, effort and energy, you know, it's a quick turnaround to the first four. Where is the team right now mentally, emotionally, physically for that effort and energy? Well, I think, first of all, all of them had the dream of being here and playing in this tournament and hearing their school, UC Davis, announced on Selection Sunday. So to watch them live out that dream was special, and they were riding on adrenaline probably for the first 48 hours, but they've settled in the last 24, and they're locked in. They've got a business-like approach, and if anything, the coaches are probably more, a little more uptight than the players. You saw them dance in, didn't right, you? Right. They danced in. You kind of walked in. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but, Coach, I know defense is a big part of what you do. What are the keys here defensively for you today? Well, North Carolina Central is a really good offensive team, so we've got to be disruptive. We have a good athleticism. Uh, our guys have played together on the defensive end, and they just got to trust themselves, trust each other, trust the system, but we got to get after them and disrupt them a little bit because this team can put up points and put up points in a hurry. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Casey, back to you. Appreciate it, Coach Les. Thank you. We take a look at what their defense is up against. Interesting of note here when you look at NC Central, the number 70 is important today, people. Why? If you're at home watching, they're 16-0 and 0 this season when they score 70 points. Now, the they, led by Lavelle, again, I didn't give him the nickname, but Poetry and Moten, you get that nickname. 
deserve it. 1,700 plus points, Brendan, at this school as a member of the Eagles and a friend of yours. The job he's done with the program has been spectacular. Oh, what Lavelle has done at NC Central has been absolutely fabulous. He's definitely a friend of mine. He's cousin of Donald Williams, so he has a relationship there at Carolina. It always goes back to Carolina. It does go back to Carolina. That's how I know him because we used to play on the same summer league team at Shaw University. I set a lot of screens for him. He shot a lot of shots. Didn't give me a lot of passes, but he was an excellent scorer at Central. He played great. He has his team playing great. I'm happy for him. I honestly think NC State should probably look at this guy for a job, man, because I think he could really help their ball club. You know, you would like to have played with Patrick Cole back then. This is a guy who really is up near the top of the conference. What makes him special, Brennan? He's an aggressive guard. He's aggressive in the pick and roll. He does a little bit of everything. He can score it, rebound it. He gets assists. He's top three in the conference in points, assists, and rebounding. That's special, too. So when you have a guard that's that dynamic, that can get assists, the rebounds, and the points, he affects the game in so many different ways. He's a strong guard inside. I'm sure he's going to play big tonight. This is his moment. And the best thing, I think, about North Carolina Central is that they are the most experienced team in the country. Five seniors in the starting lineup and their top two of their top three reserves coming off the bench are also seniors the other one is a junior um, they're very good in terms of their defense second in the country in three-point defense they actually won a game at Missouri I know Missouri was no great shakes but still for still for North Carolina Central to beat an SEC school on the road held them the 25 percent shooting and my favorite stat of the night North Carolina Central leads the country in free throw defense <laughs> Opponents are shooting 63.1% against them. That's the lowest percentage in the country. And that is significant, significant because UC Davis really butters their bread at the foul line. They're not a good three-point shooting team. They get to the line a lot. So if North Carolina Central can defend them without fouling and hold down the field goal percentage, I love their chance to win because of their experience. Well, we saw soft rims last night. It might help out the free-throw shooters. We go through it to the other side. When you look at UC Davis, and uh, you, yesterday we had Junior Robinson. This is going to be one of my favorite stories and one to follow if you're at home and that's Chima Moneki. This is a guy you see him wearing goggles. He wears them on the court. He's nearsighted and he refuses to wear contact lenses guys. So that's where he wears the swim goggles. But his story is fantastic. He's a guy who played soccer. Nigerian diplomats, his parents. He lived in Nigeria, Switzerland, France, England, Nigeria, Australia twice. All of that time playing soccer and then sat in high school and a bunch of his friends saw his height like basketball Wally and they said, you know what, you might want to try this whole thing. He got to a junior college and Jim Les caught a, a glimpse of him in St. Louis and the rest is history. He's been one of the more consistent players. <clears throat> He's been tremendous. He's got to channel his inner Brendan Haywood tonight. Oh, I want to pull off the upset and get this win. He's a tremendous shot blocker. He can really defend the rim. And Cole and Graf really want to attack the rim. They're not great jump shooters. So he cannot get in foul trouble. He's a double-double machine. I think UC Davis has a little bit of advantage down low. And soccer was my first sport. So soccer translates very, translates very well to the basketball court. It gives you good instincts on defense as far as, uh, as, far as spacing and protecting the basket. Um, this is not a great shooting team either, this UC Davis team. Both these teams don't really rely much on outside jump shooting in the three-point line, but they attack. They rely on dribble penetration to break down the defense. That's what they're going to have to do tonight if they want to win. Yeah, Moneki looking to do that, by the way, has not seen his parents been back to Nigeria since 2009 here chasing his dream. If their dreams are going to go well, you saw Brent Lamar. He's going to have to be part of it, too. So. Yeah, he's a terrific player as well. Good size again in the backcourt, so I think that's a pretty good matchup between him and Patrick Cole. A six foot four, a senior guard from San Diego, third in the Big West in scoring at 16 points per game. So they're going to have to do it with efficiency and two-point shots as opposed to three-point shots. They don't have anybody on this team who shoots better than 38% from behind the line. So this, this one might be first one to, what, 55 wins, I'm thinking? Double nickel ought to do it. I was going to say, I hate to do the generic, and I love in baseball, where they say, what does the pitcher do? Well, he tries to work both sides of the plate. I hate to be that guy, but the fundamentals, right, for, for teams that don't have explosive offense and a lot of shot making, how important is it to make sure not to make the mistakes? Yeah, when you don't have a lot of offense, what you don't want to do is help another team that's not a great offensive team by turning the ball over. So you have to take, you have to control the ball. You have to play great defense that, that you normally do. Don't let them get a lot of open looks. Make them work for their bucket. Central does a great job of also uh, controlling the three-point line. Opponents shoot 29% from three. So they're going to take away the three-point line naturally. They have to make sure that they don't help UC Davis by turning the ball over. Even though their guards are aggressive, they have to be smart with their aggressiveness. Both teams have to keep each other. You said it off the, three, off the free throw line. Don't want to give each other those easy points. 
We saw high scoring, though, in that UD arena. Those rims, they look like sewers up there. I mean, some of those shots the guys were shooting. Hey, right you, look like you, want, you look like you wanted to go back up there and get a couple jump I shots. I love in. that gym. I played in that gym back in Miami of Ohio. I had a tremendous game at 41 in that gym my junior year. So it's a great shooting gym, great perspective, um, a good place to play. So let's see if it helps these non-offensive teams out a little bit. Yeah, and I'll be interested to see, like, similar to what we saw last night uh, with the Mount and New Orleans the nerves, you know, early on, because again, I expect this to be a low scoring, low possession game. So if you spot someone a six, eight point lead, if you turn the ball over and give them some easy ones, uh, those are going to loom larger than they would if it's a 70, 80 type of game. I think it's this game. I think both teams are going to be under 60 points. That'd be my prediction. You know what I do when I get nervous? What's that? I eat. <laughs> Which is unfortunate, but not for this case, because as we head to tip, it reminds me. Segway. We've got the, see what I did there? The Pizza smooth. Hut yeah. countdown. The segue, to the, the segue to the sponsored element, that's high level. It is that's high level. Please, please sell. That's where we get paid. Uh, <laughs> Wally, by the way, are we, you going to order the pizza or what? You got it. get this done? Yep. Right. Meat lover's deep dish. Right. Childhood favorite. I like not it. Not the healthiest, though. <laughs> Better share. <laughs> After the way I saw him eat sushi last night, he might not be any left. <laughs> Inhale it. Oh. There he oh! is. Don't pass, Wally. Oh, wow. What do you do? Don't Ooh. pass the ball. Oh, who did no, this to Wally, man? I'll shoot that one. When you go no, to the hotel gym. You better gym, not shoot that ball. <laughs> honestly, if you go to the hotel gym and Wally's in there looking like that, you turn right back around take a walk outside. <laughs> Don't forget to watch live games. Segway on your computer, phone, no idea how to get here. Tablet or streaming device. March Madness Live. Watch now at mca.com slash March Madness or download the app today. App to stay here. Our first four coverage continues. The Infinity NCAA tip-off is sponsored by Infinity. Empower the drive. You can play the official bracket game of NCAA March Madness, the Capital One NCAA March Madness Bracket Challenge. Ready right now for your picks. Get your brackets started at NCAA.com or in the March Madness Live app. They are getting ready. North Carolina Central locked in. It is the Eagles and the Aggies. The first four coverage continues from Atlanta next. All right, for Dewan Graff, 14 plus points a game. Florida Gulf Coast transfer coming on strong as a senior. Good athlete and hoping to have a good night. If he does, he could become a part of this as we take a look at another edition of the Infinity Hardwood Heroes. I want to push myself just a little bit further, just a little bit further. They told my husband that I probably wasn't going to make it. They put me on a ventilator. My heart started to hurt my lungs. I was, was gasping for air. I don't take any breath for granted. Not anymore. Not ever. Help Infinity fight cancer and make your bracket matter. All right, we have talked about here on the first four of the last couple of days, the bracket busting. And sometimes, you guys know this, it's about individual performances. You were certainly a part of one in 99. Let's talk about some of the guys who might fit into that category. It's all about, I know you're a big man, so I love this. You, you stuck with the guard play, with your pick of somebody who could make a difference. He's jealous of the guards. I am jealous of the guards because they get to the dribble and have all the fun. Exactly. The, big, the big man have to fight down low and do the gritty, grit, uh, the gritty stuff. But I tell you what, one guard that doesn't get enough credit to me in college basketball is Monty Morris. Uh, the point guard for Iowa State, he does everything. He, he, does, he can score the ball, he can shoot the ball, but the biggest thing he does is he assists and he doesn't turn the ball over. Tops in the nation in assist to turnover ratio. And I love the fact that he steps up big in big games. First game against Kansas, 23.7 assists. Next time against Kansas, when they won that game, 25 points and seven assists. I think he's going to be the reason why Iowa State can make a big-time run in this tournament. And guess what? If they win their game in the first round, there's a good chance they see Kansas again. So I think it's going to be very interesting what he does in this tournament. I think he has a chance to open a lot of eyes in this tournament to how good Monty Morris really is. Point guard season going to be a point guard draft, and it shows you how deep it is. Morris not talked about enough. We know that Oregon's going to need to be deep because they lost Boucher to the injury, so now maybe spotlight on somebody new. Yeah, Dylan Brooks. He's going to have to even do more, and he does absolutely everything for this team. This is my new man crush. It's a new year. Last year it was walk-up. This year it's Dylan Brooks. Look at this dunk. Ooh, posterization 
on the Bruins over two guys. He just has a simple game, just a lethal outside jump shooter. He's got a great jab step, one-two dribble game, and he reminds me a lot of Carmelo Anthony and plays a little bit like I do. Look at those percentages, high percentage shooter. He's going to have to really be aggressive if Oregon wants to make a run. Let me see that dunk again. How about this? Now, could you do this? You say he plays like you. I mean, I used to be able to yeah. do this when I was in college. Over when? two guys. While you, while you never dunk on anybody <laughs> like that. That's 20 fingers and four hands right there. He is explosive. He is talented. He doesn't mess around with the ball. One, two dribbles. He either makes a shot, makes a play, or moves it. I love the way this guy plays the game. All right, we'll search for the video for Wally's dunk back at Miami of Ohio. <laughs> single like dunk, that. The one, the one, the this is, let me tell you something. This is a great staff we have. I don't know if they're that good. Uh, we know Gonzaga's going to need to be good to finally get to that Final Four, but they've got some help. So. Well, unlike Brendan Haywood, I appreciate the big man in college basketball, and there's no one who is bigger and better bearded than Shemek Karnowski, 7'1", 300-pound native of Poland, fifth-year senior at Gonzaga. And let me tell you, he's got twinkle toes for his footwork. He's got great touch, 60% from the field. That's 19th in the country. And the big fella can run. You talk about a great point guard, wings, great shooters. Shemek Karnowski's like the rug in Big Lebowski. He ties the room together. And he gives them a dimension that really no other team in this tournament. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. Abe Lincoln. It. Is that me Dave playing Lincoln Tevye? on the left. <laughs> look at that, right? Is that he me playing Tevye? Like you do Lincoln. look like Honest Abe Lincoln. <laughs> I, now, I, I could say this, this on set. Dave. That was as close to Rabbi Davis as we might get. Oh, hey. Uh, Tevye. Nearsighted and wearing the glasses, but wearing them better well, than well, I do. Chima bad. Moneki could be a big story. The Aggies and the Eagles getting ready for tip. So are we. The Infinity NCAA tip-off is sponsored by Allstate, official protector from March Mayhem. We love not only that you watch, but that you get involved, like Tyler here. I love that Wally Zerbiak is doing pregame coverage for the NCAA tournament. He is the GOAT. Wow. You need a reminder? Do you have a cousin named Tyler? Let's do some Wally vision. There you go. Now, I, I'm waiting for the dunk over three guys, but the shooting looks good. Yeah, the shooting looks good. I don't know if... Uh, I, I remember the playoff wars There you had. go, right there. There you go. There's, I, oh, I remember the playoff wars we had when he was in Cleveland. I didn't see a right. lot of dunking. I saw a lot of jump shots, but not a lot of dunking. <laughs> well, that, that, that's when I had one knee and half a hip. Uh, you, were still, uh, you were still great with one knee. You were still the GOAT. The greatest of all time. <laughs> Seriously, have you aged a day? It makes me like you. That's, what, that's what happens. Ten hours like of sleep, that. Seth Davis. What happens Ten when hours. Ten hours. So we get ready for NC Central, Rashawn Madison and company. One NBA player from the school, the great Sam Jones. Who will next make themselves great? We continue on the Infinity NCAA tip-off. We mentioned before that our old Brendan Haywood, Ooh. friends with Lavelle Moses. Ooh, Lavelle is clean, boy. He is not dressing you, boy. Oh, man, he's killing me. Lavelle is clean out here. That is quality. Ooh. That is Frazier quality. Life. Yeah, hey, very no, much so. Hey, man, we're, we're not going to do Lavelle like this. <laughs> no, no, Walt's great. That's so much better that than what is. Danny Manning was wearing last night. I love Yeah, uh, Well, he wasn't yeah, matching not. too well. Yeah. Danny was struggling with that blade. Patrick Cole, he's been matching up well. Top three in pretty much every offensive category in the conference. Can he carry it into the tournament for NC Central? If he does, it'll be bad news for Britton Lamar and company. UC Davis, hoping they dance forward. We send it out to Dayton next.